to enjoy Breath of the Wild. You may have bought The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because it got such great reviews. Maybe this is your first Zelda game. Maybe you've played a Zelda game before, but never beaten one. Maybe you were a long time Zelda fan, but when you actually got down to playing the newest game in the series, you didn't enjoy it. It was overwhelming. The world was too big. You didn't know what to do. You tried to follow the main quests, but you got stuck. Maybe you got stuck on a hard boss fight. Maybe the world feels too empty and devoid of content. Hi, my name is Remblin, and I am an old gamer. And I am here to try to teach you how to play Breath of the Wild in a way that you will enjoy it, if you can't enjoy it naturally. Number one, do as many shrines as possible. First of all, you want to almost always be looking for shrines with your Sheikah Slate. I know the beeping sound is annoying, but don't turn it off. There is nothing detrimental to doing shrines. You get one step closer to increasing your heart cage or stamina circle. And sometimes you get cool items in shrines, like clothes. Also, be sure to get every item in any given shrine. If you look at your map, an item just icon will show up next to the shrine's name once you get every item in that shrine. Number 2. Fake Light Spoiler Ahead if you have played a Zelda game before, you know that there is a certain legendary weapon that you can get in most of them. In Breath of the Wild, you can get that weapon too, but you will need a lot of hearts to be able to pick it up. This is why I suggested you do as many shrines as possible. And so for every four shrines you complete, don't increase your stamina circle just yet. Load up on hearts until you have enough to pick up the weapon. How much you will need will be up to you to find out. Number 3. Light spoilers again. One of the first main quests has you meeting Impa, and one of the things he wants you to do is go to the certain locations pictured in some photographs. I might suggest that you skip this quest for now. It's the beginning of the game, and she wants you to find needles in a haystack. It's overwhelming! You may be thinking, how the hell am I supposed to find these locations? However, there is one photograph that is pretty straightforward, and that is the upper left photograph. You can tell that it is located on a straight line toward Hyrule Castle. To get it, however, you will need to kill some guardians. At this point in the game, you may not be prepared to kill guardians yet. If you insist on getting this photograph, then the next tip is for you. Number 4. Killing Guardians The most obvious weakness of guardians is their eyes that shoot lasers. It's very small though and hard to hit. You can try to hit it with your bow, after which it will be stunned and I'll allow you some free hits. If you can find some cover though, it is easier to take out their legs, decreasing their mobility, and then whack on them at melee range. Also, if you can time shield parries, you can send their lasers directly back at them, doing massive damage. If you parry too early, you will get hit. And if you parry too late, you will just block, and your shield will suffer a lot of damage. Guardians also take extra damage from ancient weapons. You know those weapons that glow blue, and often found in shrines?
If we can manage to beat some guardians and get to the place in the photograph, you will get Link's iconic blue tunic from Impa. This is why you might want to learn how to beat some guardians. Let's go back to learning how to enjoy playing the game. Number 5. Vary up your brain style. If you're a goal oriented gamer like I am, you will naturally want to complete quests that are given to you. But if you want to get the most enjoyment out of Breath of the Wild, you don't want to always be in a goal oriented state of mind. Sometimes you will just want to explore the world without a goal in your mind. See something interesting? Go explore it. You might find new items that you can add to your inventory, food to eat, or even Korok seeds. Feel like killing some Bokoblins? Kill them! A lot of enemy camps have a treasure chest as rewards for clearing them out. The satisfaction of combat can be its own reward. You might want to practice perfect dodging, where you dodge at the last moment to trigger a slow motion sequence and Link unleashes a flurry of attacks. Between main quests or divine beasts, you might want to take a break, do some shrines and exploring, instead of going on to the next divine beast right away. Another playstyle is farming items. From time to time, you might not want to fight, explore, or do shrines. If you find a weapon you like, you might be able to farm it. Try resetting the area by teleporting to a tower or shrine. Farming could also include farming food like apples. You might find satisfaction in incrementing the number of your items on your inventory screen. Number 6. Always be looting. You don't have to go out of your way to loot everything if it's inconvenient. But if an item is on the way from point A to point B, then there's no harm in picking it up. Just walk normally and mash the A button. Even if you don't know what it does and you don't need it yet, you might be able to make use of it later on, especially food. During boss fights, you will be happy you spent a second or two picking up that mushroom next to the bottom of a tree, or apples from a tree's branches. Number 7. Increase your weapon stats. If we've gone to Kakariko Village, you will probably have met Hestu. He or she can increase your inventory limits, whether it's for weapons, shields, or bows, with Korok seeds. In general, you will want to increase your weapon stats. Unless you try to parry a lot or use a bow a lot, you will go through weapons far more quickly than either of those. So just increase your weapon stats until you hit the limit. Number 8. Don't look up guides on how to find or beat shrines, divine beasts, bosses, or Korok seeds. This may seem ironic because this is a video about tips on the game and I have a no commentary long play series of the game on my channel but this guide is more about general gameplay and mindset tips rather than on specific answers to specific questions. Also with my long play of the game I assume that the viewer won't watch it if he or she does not want to be spoiled. It is more for people who have already beaten the game or for people who feel like they will never play the game. Some gamers who play a lot of single player games are very goal oriented. We want to beat the game and when it seems like a game is wasting our time or too casual, we get frustrated. Don't think this way while playing Breath of the Wild. Imagine you are a kid again and have all the time in the world. Beating the game is certainly a goal, but the chief goal is to have fun. If you take the pressure of beating the game off your shoulders, you will have much more fun. Explore the world, discover its secrets, and enjoy the game. Number 9. Take breaks. 
This might seem too basic a tip, but I am gonna stick with it. Take breaks, and I don't just mean a 15 minute break between play sessions. You might want to cleanse your gaming palette and play something else, and then come back to Zelda. Your muscle memory will help you remember how to play the game. Then again, this might hinder your enjoyment of the game. So the next tip is for you. Sometimes I feel more satisfaction from a game when I dive deep into it for long periods of time. So number 10 would be to exclusively play Zelda until you beat it. This might be too hardcore for some people, but this might actually help some people, so that's why I'm suggesting it. You know these days, there are so many things vying for our attention when it comes to entertainment. YouTube, Twitch, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and even social media like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook can suck up our time. There is something calming and satisfying about focusing on one thing for a long period of time. Imagine that you live in the 1990s. The internet is not a household thing yet. When you get home from school, you have done all your homework, and all you have to do for fun is playing Zelda. There is something beautiful beautiful about that. Imagine you are living in that time and enjoy it. Enjoy the simple life once again. Number 11. Play in a comfortable position and time. For any single person, this might be different. For you, this might mean playing laying down in bed. Or maybe the most comfortable position is sitting back on your couch in front of a big screen TV. As far as comfortable time is concerned, maybe playing Zelda after school or work is not fun. Maybe video games cause just a little too much stress to be considered fun for you. Maybe the only time you can enjoy Zelda is on the go, whether you are in the car or waiting for someone or something. You don't have to play the game and rely on the game as a PR and all source of entertainment for you, because if you do, you will probably be disappointed. Zelda is just one tool that you can use to enrich your life. Number 12. Zelda is an interactive game. This might seem obvious, but it should be said out loud. Zelda is not a game that will passively entertain you. Video games in general are about active or interactive entertainment, but different games offer different levels of interaction. Zelda is one of the games that requires a high degree of interaction, both mechanically as in using the controller and mentally as in using your brain. If you look at other AAA blockbuster games out there, a lot of them are becoming more and more cinematic, more and more like movies. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I love games like The Last of Us. My point is you can't expect Zelda to offer you the same level of entertainment given the same mindset. When you play Zelda, you gotta put more of the burden of entertainment on yourself. It is like education. You pay thousands of dollars for a college education, but you have to put in the work to get the most out of it. If you do, you will be immensely satisfied, and your life will be greatly enriched. Have or create a desire that you want to do in Zelda, and then do it. The game doesn't give you many achievements, goals, or quests to go after, so you have to make your own achievements, goals, and quests. Number 13. Play like you have ADD. Instead of being so goal-oriented and focused like in other games, try playing as if you have attention deficit disorder. If something distracts you, allow yourself to be distracted by it. Don't be so worried about beating the game or making the most of your free time in real life. Imagine you are immortal and retired on a tropical island. Ooh, a bug. Go get that bug. Obsess about it. Look, a conspicuous rock on a mountain. Let's pick it up. Santa rewards you for going off the beaten path. 
It could be a Korok seed. Number 14. Have you reached the stable yet? Isn't the music there so relaxing? I have a feel like just putting down the controller and lying down in real life. Do it. I think life might be better if we didn't force ourselves to do things for a long time at a time. For example, we go to school or work for hours at a time instead of taking a more fragmented approach. At least you can take this approach with it in video games. Number 15. It is about the journey. We have all heard the cliched phrase, it's not about the destination, but the journey. Enjoy the journey to the end of the game, whatever the end of the game personally means to you. Life is full of unenjoyable things, like school and work, but that's why there are video games put to put some enjoyment back into our lives. If we can't even enjoy our video games, something is wrong. Don't treat Zelda like a task in school or work. Play Zelda the way we were supposed to live our lives, at our own leisure, and for the sake of enjoyment, and not just about accomplishing things. Number 16. Disregard everything I just said, and find your own way to enjoy Zelda. Despite all the tips I gave, it's possible that none of them may help you. If so, feel free to disregard everything I said in this video and find your own way in which you can enjoy Zelda. Finding your own method may be the greatest journey you may ever take. Because I sure had to. Back when Breath of the Wild first came out, I had pre-ordered a Switch in the game, so I had it on day one, but I wasn't playing it religiously like a lot of other people. People were getting tens of shrines every day and beating the game in a week. I wasn't. I wasn't in love with the game like many other people. So I took the game at my own pace and tried to find things about the game that I loved. It took me a few months to beat the final boss. I am currently playing through the game again on my Playing Zelda with Japanese Voices series of videos. And I realize how much more I am enjoying this game the second time around. The expectations are not there anymore. I am not expecting this game to fill the big gaping void in my heart. I am not expecting this game to be the next Ocarina of Time. I am just enjoying and appreciating the game for what it is. And what it is is a great game. I hope you've all enjoyed my program this evening. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.